Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Exodus chapter 13. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Sanctify, set apart. This is the first time it shows up in the Bible. Seventy times in sixty-five verses. Means to set apart, be clean, be holy for God. Sanctify me all the firstborn. So all the firstborn of Israel, no matter what tribe, are God's. And you're not going to find anywhere in the Bible that God says, okay, take them and burn them or kill them, or offer them as a sacrifice. He said, they're mine. And that will bring you to the one firstborn, Jesus Christ. Whatsoever opens the womb. So whatsoever, that means human or animals. Among the children of Israel, both of man and of beast, it is mine. And there were animals, we'll, we'll get with the Bible as we go on, Lord willing. You're to bring them to the tabernacle. You're to bring them to the temple. They're to be offered. There's a rule. You don't put them to yoke. You don't eat them. They're gods. That firstborn son, we are now seeing the importance of Esau giving up that firstborn right for the for the redemption of the Egyptian firstborn children that were just slain God says okay I want your firstborn I want you to dedicate that son to me for me and nothing but me and that's the first commandment God first that first child. And Moses said unto the people, Remember this day. I don't know how you could not forget. But don't we all? The greatest thing that's ever happened in my life is when I receive Christ as my Savior. And how often do I forget? I'm even commanded by the Lord's Supper to remind myself. That Christ died for my sins and he's coming again. In which you came out of Egypt. Out of the house of bondage. So that rigor work is done. For by strength of hand the Lord brought you out of, from this place. You didn't do nothing. Moses didn't do nothing. You didn't do anything for your salvation. It is by the hand of God. Brought you out from this place, Egypt. There shall no leavened bread be eaten. Now he keeps putting that emphasis on that unleavened bread. This day came ye out in the month Abit. That's the very first month. But our April. And it shall be when the Lord shall bring thee into a land of the Canaanites, Palestine, and the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Hevites, and the Jebusites. That's where Benjamin is going to be, and that's where Jerusalem is going to be. Which he swear unto thy fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give thee a land flowing with milk and honey. And thou shalt keep this service, this service, we saw that again last night, this service in this month, 
killing the Passover lamb, and no bread that has leaven. Seven days thou shalt eat unleavened bread. There it is again. And in the seventh day shall be a feast to the Lord. We would call it a holiday or a holy day. Unleavened bread shall be eaten seven days. And there shall no leavened bread be seen with thee. Not even to be seen. Neither shall there be leaven seen with thee in all thy quarters, your houses, your areas, your cities, your towns. And thou shalt show thy son in that day, saying, This is done because of that which the Lord did unto me, personal testimony, when I came forth out of Egypt. You're to tell your children what happened. You're to gather them around and remind them and show them what happened in Egypt. It shall be for a sign, Jews require a sign, on thee, upon thy hand, and for a more memorial between thy eyes, that the Lord's law may be in thy mouth, now they take it to a point they'll wear these things on their arms, they'll wear these things on their head. But it's almost looks like it's the same place where the mark of the beast goes. Instead of having Satan marking your forehead, you have the testimony and the being and the service of God. That's where the 144 are going to be marked by God's mark. For with a strong hand has the Lord brought thee out of Egypt. You didn't do it. Moses didn't do it. Aaron didn't do it. Pharaoh didn't do it. God did it. And when it comes to my salvation, what's going to get me to heaven? Not me. Not a church. But Jesus Christ, the righteous. Thou shalt therefore keep this ordinance in his season. Notice how it says his season. God calls it a male. Because it was a male lamb. Jesus Christ is a male. Don't you go messing around with neuters. Don't you go messing around with females. That salvation you're to wrought by the blood of the lamb is to be a male lamb, not female. Sorry, Mary's out. Any other female goddesses? They're out. Season from year to year. So there is a particular season for this. We've already seen the month Abed. So when you run across the Gentile calendar, and here is Easter, here is the Passover, this, and then next year it's this thing, and next year it's that, our calendar's wrong. So supposedly the world is going to end tomorrow by the rule of God. On a calendar that doesn't even match the Bible. You got a problem. And for our calendar is based upon the Roman Catholic Church. Bigger problem. If you're going to try to do any dating with God, at least do it with the Hebrew calendar. Which goes by lunar, not solar. Our calendar is solar. So, and it shall be when the Lord shall bring thee into the land of the Canaanites. Prophecy set forth, you're going. As he swear unto thee and to thy fathers, he shall give it thee. Now, the people that Moses is speaking to now, the adults, are not going in. But when you speak to your children, When your children go in, Dad was supposed to tell us that we're going to go in this land and God has promised this land to us. That was supposed to come out of the mouth of Dad. That 
Thou shalt set apart unto the Lord all that opens the matrix, the womb, every firstling, firstborn, that cometh of a beast which thou hast, cow, sheep, cattle, the male shall be the Lord's. And there's a, a defined, what we'll read in Leviticus, we'll read it continuing the law about certain animals. That's the firstborn. Very first rule here, the firstling of an ass. That firstborn ass. Thou shalt redeem with a lamb. Oh, isn't that interesting? All right, that ass needs to be redeemed with a lamb. I need to be redeemed by the lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. So you know what the Bible just said? I'm an ass. So what is one of the most popular things to call people? An ass. And they don't even know where it comes from. It comes from the Bible. It comes talking about redemption. If they knew anything. So watch. First thing the man asks, Thou shalt redeem with a lamb. And if thou will not redeem it. Redeem. Ask. Needs a lamb. And thou shalt break his neck. Kill it. Any ass that's not redeemed by the lamb is dead. Any man that is not redeemed by the lamb of God. Perishes, the Bible says. I know you got eternal life in hell, but God says that's not really life. You had to be dead. Then thou shalt break his neck, and all the firstborn of man among thy children shalt thou redeem. So God says, okay, you got a male child, firstborn. Bring them to, and then have them burned or killed. No, 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 no. That's the difference between God the Holy and Satan the, the, the God of this world. God said that firstborn is mine. You want me to kill him? Nope. Well, that's what Abraham, wanted, what Abraham was told about Isaac. Yeah, but God stopped it. You want me to slay him for a sacrifice? No. You gotta redeem that child. You gotta bring blood not of the child, but you gotta bring blood of the lamb. And for Mary it was said, you are to bring a lamb to the temple. But she couldn't afford a lamb. She had to bring turtle doves or uh, pigeons. But she had the lamb in her hand. Jesus Christ, know not to be redeemed, but by the law, by a pigeon or turtle doves. And we'll see that later on in the law. If she were to have a female or she would have a male child, you need to bring an offering. Thou shalt redeem it. The children shall thou redeem. Buy back. You want that child? You give him to me. He's my child. It's going to cost you. It's going to cost you a lamb or a pigeon or something. And it shall be when thy son asks thee in the time to come, saying, What is this? And they will. What's going on here, Dad? That thou shalt say unto him, by strength of hand, the Lord brought us out from Egypt. And what is Egypt? From the house of bondage. Paint a negative picture about Egypt. Paint a glorious picture about God. And it came to pass when Pharaoh would hardly let us go. That the Lord slew all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. Both the firstborn of man and the firstborn of beast. They're dead. 
Therefore I sacrifice to the Lord all that openeth the matrix, being males. God is so prejudiced. But all the firstborn of my children I redeem. Bring that cow, bring that sheep, it's going to die. Child, there's no sacrifice. You redeem that child. God doesn't want your, you to kill your children. Satan does. And you go back to the story. Well, there was a story of great, great, great grandpa Abraham. And he brought great, 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 great grandpa Isaac up to the mountain. And Junior, when the end of that, that happened, both Abraham and Isaac came down the mountain and a goat, no, a ram, died in his place. The redemption of Isaac cost a ram. It did not cost Isaac. And yet God will give himself to be the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world, according to Abraham. God don't want you to kill your children. And it shall be a token upon thy hand and from the frontlets between thy eyes. Almost the place where the mark of the beast. I wonder if it's the right hand. It usually is in the Bible. Between thy eyes, your forehead, where Goliath got locked to sleep. For by strength of hand, the Lord, not you, not man, brought us forth out of Egypt. You can only brag about God. And it came to pass, when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God led them not through the way of the land of Philistine. So when you look at a, a map, and they show Israel going up north, through the sea of wheat, 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 eh, I can't say it with my mouth, reeds, if you see a map of them going through the sea of reeds, they have violated Exodus 13, verse 17. Because if you're to follow the sea of reeds, it brings you to Palestine. And God said, no. God led them not through the way. I wonder what their Bible say. I wonder if they changed that. Not through the way of the land of Philistines. Look at the map. It shows you. Although that was near. Okay, that for God said, least, pre-adventure, the people repent when they see war. Uh-oh. Wait a minute. God, you brought them out. You, you saved them. You, you, and they're going to have war? You mean I'm not going to get a million dollars? I'm not going to have a wonderful life? I'm not going to have a congregation of 300 billion people who are going to go out and do everything that God wants them to do? It's not going to be just a wonderful life? So even when you see the children in the wilderness going that way, when you see them, they had just come out of Egypt. God has already told Moses to tell them, you're going to have war. So when you do what God wants you to do, you're going to see war. The first one you're going to upset is Pharaoh, type of Satan. And they return to Egypt. But God led the people about through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea. And I got a note here, 1 Kings 9.26. And the children of Israel went up, harnessed out of the land of Egypt. And they got bags, they got stuff tied to them, they got all kinds of goods. And their animals are stockpiled of lending of the borrowed goods of Egypt.
And Moses took the bones of Joseph. Genesis 50, 24 to 26. You're not going to leave Joseph, the greatest type of Jesus Christ, in Egypt. You will not find a bone of Jesus Christ in Egypt, the type of the world. Now you may find, I don't know about that shroud and stuff like that. I don't care. I don't care if you found the nails of Jesus. I don't care if you found the splinter of the cross of Jesus. That's not important. It's the fact is you won't find Jesus. So the bones of Joseph with him. For he had straightly sworn the children of Israel, Joseph, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones away hence with you. So Joseph is a prophet. He's a righteous prophet, according to Jeremiah, because what he said has finally come to pass 430 years later. Now, we run into another problem with this, with Jonah. And yet 40 days, God's going to destroy you, Nineveh. And they get right, and God says, okay, I'm not going to do it. On that account, Jonah is a false prophet. Did you know that? Why, why did he got mad? God, your word, which we'll read later, Lord willing. If a prophet says something that does not come to pass, it's a false prophet. Jonah, you lie. But after Jonah's death, as of, after Joseph's death, not about Jonah, Nineveh is destroyed, and then Jonah becomes a prophet of the Lord after his death. After Joseph's death, prophecy has been fulfilled. He's a prophet, a right prophet. And there's yet prophecies yet to be fulfilled. And every prophet that prophesied of the second coming and the millennial reign of Jesus Christ, though it has not happened, in order for God to make them righteous and proper prophets, it must come to pass. How's that? And they took their journey from Sukkah and encamped in Etham. In the edge of the wilderness. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud. And led them by the way. Jesus said, I am the way. There he is. Come on, they, they, they didn't get that one. And by night in a pillar of fire. To give light, Jesus says, I'm the light. They missed that one, I guess. To go by day and night. So they would travel day and night sometimes. He took not away the pillar of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. So we got another problem here. Well, not a problem. When you get somebody who comes, well, show me God. You are the back end of this people called Israel. You're the rear back. You're the back, back, back. And when you look over the people and you see that cloud in the daytime and night's coming, you see it as fire. And it's telling you where to go. And we'll learn later on when they're to stop and, and settle for the night, that fire, that column of, of, of cloud would react. And that would tell Moses, okay, we're going to camp. It stands still. Huh? It stands still. It stands still. And when it's time for us to pack up and start going, it'll start going. And aren't we going to read, these people are going to follow God in the wilderness? And there he is up in front of him. What's that? I got Genesis 50, 24 to 26. So, they are seeing God. 
They have seen the God of gods working against the Egyptian gods. And they're still going to rebel in the wilderness journeys that we haven't even got to yet. And when we get to Exodus 20, even more than this cloud of fire and this cloud of, of pillar, they're going to hear God speak from the mountain. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I have never heard what God's voice is. But these people that came out of Egypt heard God speak. And they still rebelled. And I'm only saying that because I had dealt with people in my time to say, just show me God and I'll believe. All right. Here's a King James 1611 Bible. Read the book of Exodus and tell me what you think when you're done. And then go into Numbers and read the book of Numbers. Skip over all the Numbers. Get to the good part. And when you get to the end of Numbers, tell me how well they did after that. Deuteronomy is the second giving of the law. To who? The children of these people who will go in the land because their fathers and mothers will die. Seeing God, seeing the works of God, seeing the signs of God. Just seeing God doesn't do you any good. Baal, he heard God, and he still went and did wrong. It's, it's, it's the heart matter. It's got to be a heart matter to get right with God. 